Hey there Titans, and welcome back to another Titan Academy video. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important elements in Titan Web, and that is the form element. Specifically, we'll be focusing on the layout and the structure of the form element. So we'll first cover how you can add a row or column to your form, how you can merge the columns within a specific row. We'll talk about how to align the elements inside a form, as well as how to space those elements out. We will talk about naming your rows. And finally, we'll talk about what happens to your form when we move to smaller devices. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click on your pink plus button, head over to your form tab, and drag in your form element. And you will be asked to set the number of columns, rows, and spacing. You can change all of these things after the fact, so don't worry about this too much. I'm going to go ahead and update the amount of columns, and I'll apply. Now, if I want to add columns and rows to my form element, all I need to do is click on this pink plus button to add a column, and this pink plus button to add a row. Now, imagine I have already placed some input fields in my form, but I still want to add a new row in between these input fields. In order to do this, I can hover on a specific row, click on the three dots that we see here, and I can add a row before or after. In this case, I'll add row before, and my row will be added. I can also delete rows like this, and that will remove all of the content inside the row as well. The next thing we're going to talk about is merging, and I'll add a column to make this a little bit more clear, and let's add a button on this final row here. Now imagine I want this entire row to be one cell. To do so, I can click on the three dots, hover on merge, click on merge all, and I'm left with one cell here. If I want to customize my cells a little bit more, I can head over to merge and do custom merge, and this will allow me to group my cells however I would like. So let's make that one cell, we'll group these as a new cell, and we'll add a third cell over here. And as you can see, these three cells have been grouped together, and I have my individual cells on either side as well. If I ever want to revert to the way that the columns were, I can just go ahead, hover on merge, and split. Now, if I want to align my element inside a cell, for example, if I want to center this button, I can click on my element, head over to the alignment, and I'll go and center my button like so. I can also, of course, move these to either side. What I cannot do is simply drag my button. It will not let me put it wherever I want. And so if you need a more specific position, you can, of course, use the alignment tool and then add margin to your element to push your element to a specific location. All right, let's talk about the spacing between our rows. So as you can see, when we add some elements, we have a little bit of a gap, and that's the gap that we set on default of 10 pixels between each of our rows. Let's move this back here to make it a little bit more clear. Okay. Now in order to create some gaps between our rows, we can head over to styling, spacing, and I'm just going to do an exaggerated spacing just so that we can see it clearly. We'll do 40 pixels, and as you can see now, between each element we have a nice gap here, or rather between each row we have this nice 40 pixel gap. The next thing I want to show is how you can name your rows, and this is, I'm going to show the layer list for this. This is important especially when you're writing conditions and you want to reference your rows to know which row you're talking about because it can be a little bit confusing using the default names for the rows. So in order to rename our rows, we can click on the three dots and click on rename, and we can say my new row, for example, and I can see on the layer list now this row has been renamed, and this is how it will be named in any kind of element interactivity or if you want to affect these rows in any way. I can also rename these from the layer list itself, so I can right-click on a row, and I can click on rename, and I can rename this, for example, I don't know, row number one, like this. The final thing I want to show is what happens when we move to smaller devices. And I'll move, first of all, to tablet large. And with tablet large, we can see that our form has basically stayed the same, and that's because the width of tablet large supports multiple columns. When we're talking about smaller devices, such as mobile small or mobile large, we don't have room to support multiple columns. And as a result, when we try to configure our mobile devices, you'll notice that the form element has taken the columns and moved those into a single column and simply shifted the cells so that they are one on top of each other based on the column that they were in. And so when we're planning our form element, we want to make sure that we understand that when we move to these smaller devices, we will end up with a single column 
where each cell in the column will end up one on top of another, and then it will move to the next row. If you want to do more complex things like supporting multiple horizontal elements within a mobile device, you can get a little more creative by doing things like adding a horizontal auto fit container. We won't show that in the video, but know that it is possible to uh, use some workarounds to display your elements horizontally within a form element in those smaller containers. That's how it's done.